everyone. Thanks for coming out. Um, so welcome to the Miller Gallery at Carnegie Mellon University. My name is Astria Superak and I'm the director of the gallery. And as part of the exhibition, we have many events that are scheduled through February um, in the gallery, around campus, and in the city. Uh, they include film screenings, flu vaccines, panel discussions, lectures, and more. To find out more about these events, you can check out our website, which is cmu.edu slash Miller Gallery. Um, and you can also sign up on our mailing list. We have a mailing list on each floor. They're in that direction. Um, so tonight, I'm so pleased to introduce you um, to our guests. I've been to, uh, I've seen many of their brilliant exhibitions at the Canadian Center for Architecture. Um, in Montreal, and we've been discussing collaboration for years, and it's finally happening. Um, and I'm proud to be able to present the U.S. premiere of Imperfect Health. So the two curators are Giovanna Borassi and Mirko Zardini. Um, Giovanna is the Curator of Contemporary Architecture at the CCA. She's also the Deputy Editor of Abitare. And Mirko is the Director-in-Chief Curator of the Canadian Center for Architecture. And he's also taught at Harvard and Princeton and the Swiss Federal Polytechnic University. And there's a lot more in their biographies, but you can read about that later. Um, and they just flew into Pittsburgh last night. So please join me in welcoming them here. Okay. So thank you very much, Astria. Uh, as Astria said, uh, it has been uh, some years that uh, we have been discussing to do something uh, together and uh, we are very very pleased to have the opportunity to present uh, this uh, work and this research and work that we did uh, on uh, health uh, here in the Miller Gallery because uh, we really, um, how can I say, we feel a very um, confident uh, with the strategy of the gallery. We are really find uh, the work that has been done here very, very interesting. In a certain way, a uh, kind of um, uh, similarity with what we try to do at the Canadian Center for Architecture. Uh, in a certain, uh, how can I say? I describe what we try to do and also this exhibition is part of that as a kind of investigation in the dark side of architecture, the gray zone, the one that architects, they don't want uh, to speak about, uh, which means the cultural assumption on which architects, they operate. We can uh, wish the best for architecture. We can uh, pretend architecture will help to solve the problem. We are part, uh, we are sharing all together today. But uh, as long as architects, they continue to think uh, on the base of certain assumptions, uh, sometimes uh, they will not help to develop a new thinking, but they will, um, how can I say, increase uh, the dimension of the problem. Uh, we discuss, we address a lot of issues from the idea of uh, sustainability, this kind of cliche that is now part of architecture, uh, to the idea of uh, urbanism, uh, to the idea of planification, to the idea of uh, efficiency and speed. Today, we have this exhibition about the health. So why health? Uh, there is a small, uh, in all, every room you see some of these uh, uh, windows uh, in which you collect, we have just collected them. And uh, I think that Astria and uh, Tezer and uh, Margaret will continue, whom I really thank and all the team, they will continue to collect uh, during these months uh, something coming from the normal press or the TV or the uh, web that every day is um, confronting us with this problem of health. Every morning, if you open a newspaper or you look at your screen on the computer, you will find something about that. Generally, very alarming. It is something about the environment, the cancer, allergy, asthma. Uh, it is about aging. Uh, mm, why are we so, how can I say, uh, touched by that? Because in a certain way, um, the body is the only thing that is left to us. Let me explain that. If you think of uh, 20, 30 years ago, 40, let's say, is better, 
there was uh, an idea of uh, a possibility of uh, an improvement in our life, of a kind of a progress, which was uh, a progress which was uh, shared with uh, the society, which was not uh, something individual, was something more collective, an idea of the future, with, uh, which was presenting itself to us as a positive improvement in respect to the situation in which we were living in that moment. And uh, if you look a little bit at the contemporary situation, you feel that all this faith in the future has been lost, all this faith in a collective better future has been lost, and uh, inevitably we are like uh, protecting a kind of a basic uh, uh, belonging that we have, which is our body and our individual future. So, um, how architects, how architecture, landscape planning, uh, uh, landscape architects, urban planners are dealing with that? There is, a, we have to acknowledge that there is one, uh, how can I say, a problem that in reality we can say that uh, the real uh, sick body is the body of architecture. Why? Architects are trying to justify more and more, to find a reason to justify a possible role they could play in the contemporary society. And they are doing that uh, looking uh, at uh, the issues that are emerging from the general contemporary debate. Sustainability and health are two examples. And they incorporate that uh, in uh, their production. Uh, in doing that, they incorporate also, in a very uh, critical way, most of the judgment and the prejudgment that our culture has uh, used to shape uh, these kind of problems. So when they incorporate a health problem in this discussion, they incorporate these health issues in the way that has already been framed by somebody else. And we will go through the exhibition and uh, we look at some of these uh, examples. So, uh, this exhibition uh, was uh, not willing to give the solution to a problem which is too complex to think that could be solved by a simple, easy way. It is uh, more representing the different ways in which uh, architects uh, are uh, framing the problem of uh, health. And uh, just give you some example of what you can find in the exhibition. You can find, uh, uh, very often, that is the usual attitude, a modern attitude towards health, which means that architects, they think that they can offer you the cure for the illness. Uh, it is a, something which is coming from the modern tradition, from the idea of sanatorium. Sanatorium where uh, one of the most important, uh, how can I say, uh, buildings that were uh, realized by architects starting in the 20s and 30s and 40s. And uh, there was the assumption on the base of the architects that uh, these buildings in which you had uh, terraces, they were in the green, uh, you had the idea of the uh, exposure to the air so that the special windows in order to have air circulation could have been the solution to the problem of tuberculosis as some uh, historian of medicine have pointed out, uh, referring in that case to England, 80% uh, of the patients, they died. It was not uh, a solution to the problem. It is a way to segregate the um, sick uh, people from the community they were living normally there. So, there are other strategies, other attitudes that we like uh, to to present to you in this exhibition, uh, something which is more thinking of architecture not as the cure of the problem, but more as taking care of something, taking care of our life, taking care of the space in which we live. That is already, for some people, is not enough. I think is much more than pretending than to be the cure of our problems. And you see in the exhibition some of these examples, a cancer center uh, that uh, is uh, clearly suggesting a new attitude towards the space in which the patient they live. I think is more and more important for us today 
than thinking of a new idea of a uh, hospital or a sanatorium as the solution of the health issues that we have. So that will be something that we'll see in uh, the exhibition. And uh, uh, this uh, tour, uh, you can feel free, we will divide the tour in three parts, the three floors. And Giovanna, who has been, uh, how can I say, I did almost everything since uh, my arrival as CCA with her. We always uh, uh, work together in all this time. And Giovanna will uh, take uh, most of the responsibility of the introduction of, uh, to you of these problems. So we will divide the presentation for the three floors. Uh, we'll speak uh, about the general issues. And then if you have any questions, we can go through them. And I think that perhaps, Giovanna, you can continue here with uh, some, uh, Issues are relating specifically to some of the material that you see in this room. So, um, as Mirko has um, explained very well, our interest in uh, why tackling the issue of health, but as you have seen from the title, the title of the exhibition of the research is also Imperfect Health. And uh, uh, what, we, uh, what was very clear in doing the research was that we have to acknowledge that uh, we live now in a, what De David Hervey has uh, defined as second nature. So uh, in a nature that has not anymore a part that uh, is part of the first nature. So it's very hard to find something that is not already changed or modified by, by humans. And so in, in doing this, we have to also think about uh, the unexpected consequences of our you know, work, uh, building, landscape, uh, urbanism that we uh, add up on the landscape and on, on nature. And so this unexpected uh, consequence deals, for example, with uh, um, the fact that then it's very difficult to define what is good or bad for us, what is healthy or unhealthy. And throughout the exhibition, you will see a lot of these things that, that or images or that will refer to something that you will think, oh, this is very healthy and probably is not, or the opposite. So it's very difficult now to define a, a clear line and, uh, and uh, to what is good or bad. And food production is one of a clear example. I think we, all of us, experience these. And at this point, like the animals that uh, were a, a friendly pet, like a cow, a chicken, or a pig, uh, we have seen in the last years that are actually caused or linked to uh, epidemics that, or viruses that we kind of like put all the cities in a, in a very challenging situation. So um, the, the change also in relation with nature or in relation with animals or food production is one of these uh, interesting cases where we start to see that, that the modification that we did and uh, its unexpected consequences are coming back. And so this brings also to the fact that uh, there are uh, some uh, uh, extreme solutions. So there are people thinking like, for example, in a case of epidemics of like, like quarantine cities, or we start to see a, a city that could be defined in an, a sick city or a healthy city. And again, a correspondent of, of this presence of sick body or, or a, a healthy body. And you are just staying in front of these projects that are showing this extreme idea of the segregation of the, even the metro lines in New York at the urban scale according to the sick or the apparently healthy and on the idea also the segregation in the house of this kind of portable bubble uh, which, uh, I don't know, but anyway, uh, with the thinking that anyway you could uh, always uh, act inside the house. So this is clearly is a project, is not <laughs> yet a reality, it was, but it was a, a way to reflect on these kind of things. As you see on the other side, the idea of some architects pushing for the extreme industrialization in the food production, that is one of the reasons of the kind of problem that we have with the food we had in the, in the last years with the, animal, the consumption of the animal foods. And finally, that photo by photographer Bas Prinsen, who also is one of these examples of 
Uh, so if you will look carefully, is uh, a part of um, Cairo where there is a community, a very large community that are collecting garbage for many, many years and they will normally have uh, peaks, you will see in the photos, that are actually after the swine flu, it's not possible obviously to have any more animals in the city, but they're actually now the, 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 the situation got worse because actually the pigs were actually helping in taking care of all kind of like uh, parts of the garbage. So again, this is one of the examples of understanding that some um, act that we will do might have uh, consequences on other kind of like uh, illnesses or uh, uh, healthy uh, decisions.